Hello fellow clay people, my name's Claire, I'm a professional ceramicist. Today I'm going to show you how I create my wine bottle stoppers. And for all you lovely people watching, I'm going to be giving away the wine stopper that I'm actually creating in this video. So stay tuned to find out how you could win the finished wine bottle stopper. Today I'm using this mould, it's a Christmas bauble mould that I bought from Scarborough Pottery Supplies in the UK. I shall put a link in the description below. So first we have to strap it together and for this I use tractor inner tubes. That's one of the beauties of living in rural France, easily available. I make a lot of my own moulds but I saw this one online and couldn't resist it. The stoneware slip I use I buy from my supplier in Limoges, they're called Ceradel. I add distilled water to it to obtain the correct viscosity and specific gravity. All sounds a bit technical, but that's the life of a slip caster. I'm pouring it through a sieve just in case there's any lumps that may have formed whilst it was sitting. The slip has been in the mould for 30 minutes now. It's now time to empty the surplus slip back into the bucket. I now take my cake palette knife to slice off the surplus slip from the surface of the mould. Try saying that when you're drunk. And this is what the pieces look like inside the mould after 30 minutes. As this is a bauble mould, I actually cut off the end of the bauble to create a flat surface to add a disc of clay, which I've already cut a hole in, the right size for the wine bottle stopper screw. Now they've had time to dry overnight, it's time to clean up the seams. I start off with a fettling knife to scrape off the high points of the seam, then I finish the job with a sponge. At this stage, they could all go in the kiln to be bisque fired, ready for glazing. Yeah, I actually came up with the idea of the wine stopper after my son bought my dad a handcrafted wooden wine stopper for Christmas. I thought the shape was so beautiful and my dad absolutely loved it and I thought, do you know what? That would work in ceramic. So here it is. Okay, so this is the bisque fired wine stopper and now we're going to apply the glazes. So I'm going to start with blue Amico's Blue Rutile and all the Potter's Choice glazes need a minimum three coats, which quite, can be quite laborious, but it's worth it in the end. Yeah, although this colour looks kind of like a rusty colour right now, it actually comes out the blue colour that's on the pot. And the thing about the combination of the two glazes I'm using, Blue Rutile with Palladium on top, is they react really well together and the effects are just amazing. The one thing you do have to be careful about though is some of the glazes really run so you don't want a situation where they're going to get stuck to your kiln gel so you, it's, all a, it's all a learning curve of how, how low you can go <laughs> and how thick you can go. So the second coat can be applied pretty much at the same time as the first coat because the first coat dries instantly with the bisque being so dry. I kind of keep going until there's no dry patches at all and then I'll call that second coat done. So that's two thick coats applied now. So I'm going to set that down, let that dry. That second coat is dry enough to apply the last coat of Blue Rutile. Alright, so that's the final coat of Blue Rutile on. I shall just set that down to dry before applying the Palladium. So I've actually been doing pottery for 18 years, but two years ago I made the very brave decision to quit my job so that I could do pottery full time because it's what I'm passionate about and it's what I love. And here I am today, I've got my Etsy shop, I sell in a couple of local boutiques and I have never been happier. So I'm now going to add palladium to the top third, slightly overlapping the blue rutile because it's the overlap, the layering effect that creates the drips, which makes the end piece so beautiful. So we've got three thick coats of palladium now, I slightly overlap in the blue rutile and as a final flourish I'm going to add some dots of palladium just to create some extra drippiness over the blue rutile. And that is now ready to go into the kiln to be glaze fired. So I mentioned earlier in the video that you'd have an opportunity to win the finished wine stopper and you're probably wondering how? Well all you have to do is write down in the comments below what you're passionate about and I'll choose a winner at random 
and the wine stopper will be winging its way to you. So here it is, the finished wine bottle stopper. I've added this, the, the actual stopper to the bottom now, so it's finished, ready to go. This is what you could be winning. So I'm going to announce the winner on the 12th of December on my Instagram page, at claire.ceramics. So all you've got to do, if you want to see who's won, is check out my Instagram page on that date. And it could be yours. So I hope you've enjoyed my video of how to make the wine bottle stopper. And until next time, I'll say goodbye and good luck.